Good morning and welcome everybody. Welcome to our in the room audience and our welcome to our online audience. I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of Australia and Maori peoples of Aotearoa, New Zealand. We are hosting this meeting today on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Welcome everybody. My name is Delaine Smith. I'm the CEO of the Australasian Leukaemia and Lymphoma Group, which is a cooperative cancer clinical trial group. And I've got the absolute privilege of opening this session today, which I've been very excited and looking forward to for two years now that we have our national piece of infrastructure ready to go. Uh, this symposium is uh, obviously um, uh, the Australian Research Data Commons um, symposium and is presented on behalf of the Hassander project nodes which is the group of the cancer cooperative trial groups importantly the mental health node the Melbourne Academic Centre for Health node and the South Australian node so there's a lot of commonalities that we all have together as as nodes working under the Hassander framework um, with the Australian Research Data Commons and that is that we are all absolutely 100 percent invested academic researchers I'd like to thank the organising people for today's symposium, Martina Chiareza, Nemanja Zivanov, Katie Odawaska, Carly Green and Tamara Hooper. Just as a little segue into what we're going to be covering, I thought I'd just give a little bit of background to our clinical trial research environment in Australia. So I think we are all a group of uh, absolutely converted people. Clinical trials are essential for improving the treatments and outcomes for patients. They provide access to new treatments and new models of care, and they improve medical knowledge and healthcare professionals' knowledge. In Australia, the government and industry together invest $1.1 billion annually in academic clinical trials in Australia. We rank middle globally for the advancement of clinical trials activity, and we have absolutely, without a doubt, a global reputation for excellence and transparency in quality clinical trial data. There's some features about Australia in particular. We have a universal healthcare. This is really important in underpinning what we can achieve as academic researchers. We have universal Medicare for everybody, regardless of your socioeconomic status. This means that an enormous number of standard of care tests and procedures are already funded. We have public hospitals that are funded by the state governments. We have a national drug regulatory process through our TGA and PBAC committees. We have a national program for lead ethics that enables us to fast track good quality clinical trials through ethics committees. We have uniform site contracts that allow us to collaborate with each other easily and we have a national accreditation scheme for hospital clinical trials units. I think you can say that because of these benefits, our healthy research and environment in Australia really lends itself well to continue academic clinical trials. And what we've got with Hassanda now is an ability to take one step further, that better evidence generation to change practice. Here's some stats from the Australian and New Zealand Clinical Trial Register. This is our national register. This data is from um, 2015, but 2020 data represents pretty much the same uh, outcomes. Half a million Australians a year participate in a clinical trial. There has been, over time, an increase in non-commercial trials. So our academic clinical trials are actually right up there now in uh, a greater percentage of clinical trials being conducted. There's a decrease in the average sample size per trial. This is perhaps uh, not uncommon, learning about uh, the different subtypes that we're learning of our different diseases across the different fields that we work in. Cancer is the most studied area at 18%, mental health very close at 12. So there is a high need to continue to address clinical trial activity and improve health outcomes for patients with these diseases. Clinical trials actually are a great value for money. For every dollar that we invest in clinical trials activity, there is the return of a $5 health investment in the healthcare return. So the Advancing Healthcare Health Research Through Data Sharing project 
Um, this is a new initiative of the last few years that we've been working on as a project and we launched earlier this year. I'd like to thank the Australian Government for their investment and I'd like to particularly call out the amazing team of Rhys Williams and Kristen Kang uh, who have driven this through with absolute enthusiasm and backing to all of those uh, to whom much of this was very new at the time. But there is a wealth of clinical trial data that exists through the clinical trials that we have conducted through our various nodes over the decades. And as you'll know, we want to publish our primary endpoint. Many of us have secondary endpoints that we also seek to publish. But after this, those trials and the data sets are often archived. And that's it. So you can see here we've got a big reserve of clinical trial quality data that has been collected that can be used for secondary research data purposes. And the sharing of secondary data can be done now through this national portal that we've developed, decreases the timeframes, decreases the funding requirements. Today we're going to hear from a range of experts to discuss the benefits of data sharing and how this can lead to improved health outcomes. And we'll have some panel discussion. And I hope everybody online and in the room will be able to participate. 